Hey everyone, uh, Peter from Argo. This is video number two, video number two of our early May uh, Twitter Q&A. Thank you again for sending the questions in. All right, jumping right into it. Thanasis, at Sutos Thanasis. How are you, Peter G. Wall? One, how are you, Peter G. Wall and team doing? Um, we're good. Honestly, I, I feel like, um, like, really, if you're gonna ask me that question, uh, I'm gonna give you an honest answer. Um, I, I, I mean, it's, we're busy. Like, there's just a lot on the plate right now, and I feel like there's a lot to get done. I feel like a real urgency to push and, you know, achieve. Um, and I feel like we've, I don't want to speak complacent, to be honest. Like, I, we've, we've had a good start of the year, and there's just a lot of work to do. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a busy time. Um, number two, amazing results and great to see admin expenses coming down. Thank you, uh, uh, Thanasis. We've been, we've been working on that, obviously. Could you provide us with a rough estimate of when you'll be able to announce future hash rate for the Q4 Epic machines and for the Texas facility in full capacity of 200 megawatts? Um, you know, going back to like what I've been saying a lot, I, you know, as I've been talking to shareholders and investors over the last week, you know, coming out of the results from last week, I, I think one of the things that sets us apart is our focus on smart growth and the fact that we've never kind of put a stake in the set, sand and said, we want to get to X amount of, you know, X a hash by here and kind of like creating a false number or maybe maybe a real number, but creating a number that that is a number just to have a number. We've always, and one of the things I like about Texas is that it allows us to expand when the opportunity is right to expand. In other words, we'll have the infrastructure in place and then we can fill it when we like the, op, you know, the options that are on the table. So we have a decent amount of hash rate now. We're running those machines well. We've got you know, the Epic uh, opportunity, or for lack of a better term, the Epic machines coming and, and an opportunity to scale with those machines in a really effective way and other opportunities that we're looking at, which we haven't announced yet. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to give you a timeline as to when we'll kind of announce because, um, again, it's that we, I think we, I might even get in trouble for giving an, an announcement about when we're going to do something other than uh, we want to do it when the time is right. So I, I don't know if that's a cop out, but, but that's the truth. Um, Number three, in the 2020 results, you mentioned that you hold uh, uh, 1243 BNB coins and some Ethereum. Can you update us if those are still held? Those are nice gains if they're still there. I mean, we always have this kind of number of Bitcoin and Bitcoin equivalents. Obviously, we hold the majority of our holdings are, are Bitcoin. That was in the 2020 numbers as well. We don't disclose what the equivalents are. Um, and there's not a ton of movement in there, but there is some movement. So I can't, um, you know, we haven't announced to the market what, what those numbers are, but um, you know, the, 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 the priority is to hold Bitcoin and um, and then we do have some altcoins which we hold. Um, and obviously Ethereum's done well, we're holding, you know, we, we like Ethereum um, and then BNB, yeah, we have some of that. So um, yeah, I can't say much more other than we hold, you know, majority Bitcoin and then there's a portion that is, uh, is, is not Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin mining investor and privateer, love it. Um, at Linder, invest uh when can you start construction and a video from the site well as you know we love to make videos so um when we have uh a video from the site we'll let you know um things are on schedule with texas and and you know we've got this time frame to have it ready for for q1 2022 um we haven't announced when we're going to break ground um, but as soon as we do we'll let you know and yes I, we already have plans to to shoot some videos um, as the as the thing's being built up. Um, Nordy, at by BTC2, do you have any idea in your own mind what percentage of the tw Texas 200 megawatts facility will be dedicated to Bitcoin? So right now, as you know, uh, Nordy, the majority of our mining is Bitcoin. Uh, and you also know that we have a smart growth mentality where we you know are, are we like mining Bitcoin, but we also look at other opportunities with other coins. So um, you know, it'll be, and again, I don't want to like sound like a cop out, but there'll be a portion that'll be Bitcoin. There'll be a portion that won't be Bitcoin. The most profitable machines we've ever bought have been our Zcash machines. Um, you know, that, that the RZ11s, 
which have been mining you know for the last two years in some cases and have done an incredible ROI. So we look for opportunities like that that are not necessarily um, you know kind of out on everyone else's radar. Um, but in terms of the final percentage, you know that's that's a work in progress. We, we haven't decided yet. Um, Glenn Hodel, hey Glenn, um, thank you for for your questions and your support as always. Uh, question for, for Peter G. Wall: The Epic blockchain machines sound like they'll be. I'll be kind. Altcoin, <laughs> altcoin miners. Will you convert those alts straight to Bitcoin to hold on the balance sheet, keep as they are, or something in between? I think the answer is it depends, Glenn. Um, you know, I mean, you have to look again historically to what we've done when we've had Zcash. Uh, for the most part, we've converted Zcash directly into Bitcoin and held it in Bitcoin. There's been a few times where we felt like Zcash was uh, was appreciating quickly, and we liked what was happening with Zcash, and so we um, so we did hold some Zcash at, at times. But but for the most part, we do convert um, directly into Bitcoin. Uh, we find obviously it's it's you know the asset that we like to hold. The appreciation has been really good on Bitcoin. Um, so for the most part, that's been that's been the strategy. Okay, next question um, in my lower voice from at Trainer Beast. Uh, interesting um, name. Uh, I heard a rumor that once Argo becomes a trillion dollar company, you will send all shareholders hoodies and party balloons. I also think Argo should have a cake competition. I love cake. Um, first on the hoodies and um, party balloons. Yes, if we become a million tra trillion dollar company, hoodies and, and party balloons for everyone, full stop. And a cake competition. Maybe we should have a, a Twitter poll on that. Let's do a Twitter poll and see um, if we should have a, like an Argo bake a cake um, Twitter company. I, I don't see why not. I think it's interesting. But let's let's ask the people. Let's ask our our, our shareholders, shareholders. Okay, I'm actually now uh, left my office and I'm in the basement because I I did was talking too loud and I woke up my wife and my microphone died. So now I'm using the sound off of the phone. So. Yeah, I'm, but I'm determined to finish this video tonight. And if you hear noises from upstairs, it's, there's a random teenager. Well, actually, my son, one of my sons roaming around. But here we go. Um, continuing on. So next question from uh, Andrew Morrisby. Great work, everyone. Keep it up. Um, same question as last time. If it's possible, have you ever considered using your credit facility to buy? And I'm knocking the table now, too. Sorry to buy Bitcoin outright to increase your HODL and then sell part of it to recoup costs as it depreciates in value. Um, so the short answer is lots of interesting financial innovations happening out in you know, the world of financial markets and Bitcoin right now. We're looking at them, um, but we have, and so you know, have we considered, yes, we've considered using innovative ways to, to you know, use our Bitcoin and to, um, you know, Try, try to be innovators in, in that area, but we're doing lots of things right now. Um, so it's, 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 um, what's the right way to say it? It's on the list, but it's, um, it's just a, it's an idea right now. Of one, one of many that we're, we're considering. Um, next one, uh, V chain Chong at caveat crypto. Looking at the minor Bitcoin inflow outflow charts, we now see a clear trend reversal of miners holding their coins and not selling to exchanges. What is Argo's strategy with regards to this? When do you sell and when do you hodl? So the short answer is we hodl. I, I keep giving short answers. <laughs> trying to get finished. Um, good question. 2020, we sold because we needed, you know, um, to pay for our operating costs. Uh, the market was different. You know, our cash situation was different. 2021, we haven't sold any Bitcoin so far in 2021. We've been, as you can see from our monthly operational updates, we've been increasing our Bitcoin hodl on a month to month uh, basis. Um, so when we have cash that can cover our, off our operating expenses, our preference is, is to use that. If we're shorter on cash, then we do sell Bitcoin, um, at least historically, to cover off um, our, uh, you know, uh, yeah. To, to pay for our, our power costs mostly and, and some admin costs. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully that gives you an answer. Uh, and, and for sure, you're seeing this trend kind of larger playing out on a, on a kind of general um, fashion in, in the marketplace for with other miners. Uh, given you know the way Bitcoin's been appreciating, given the amount of excitement ar around having Bitcoin on the balance sheet, 
uh, for not just miners, but for, for other publicly traded companies as well. Uh, it, it's something that, that you're seeing uh, more often. So ho hopefully that, that answers your question, uh, Mr. V-Chain Chong. Um, next question, Ben Stevens, at Ben V. Stevens. With the 49 million pounds raised in new equity, given the time frame to spend it is over the next 12 months, is there a plan to invest in any any of this in Bitcoin? Then, as each of the projects, Texas, etc., requires an installment, convert the required amount back to fiat, as Tesla has demonstrated. Yeah, interesting. Tesla obviously just did this. They bought 1.5 trillion, 1.5 billion. Um, sometimes it seems like a trillion uh, of Bitcoin. And then they've recently sold a chunk of like 10% or something like that of that uh, and took some profits. I think more than anything, from what I at least understand, that that was a move by Tesla to kind of test the liquidity of the market in a, in a you know, in the hundreds of millions of, of um, dollars. Clearly, there is liquidity in, in the Bitcoin uh, marketplace and all over the world. Um, so that test was positive. It also helped that it was a profit. Um, you know, it was profitable because Bitcoin's appreciated since they made their first uh, purchase or, the, or their large purchase. Um, in terms of Argo, you know, we, we did take some of the raise that we did in January and we did buy Bitcoin with it. And that was because we had more cash on hand um, that we were going to deploy in the short term. Um, and so we, we thought, again, good, good idea to put it into Bitcoin. So we bought some Bitcoin at a price that now looks, you know, like it was a smart move. Um, and, uh, but that was, that was more of a one-off. That's not kind of a long-term strategy for us. Obviously we love to have Bitcoin on the balance sheet, but, um, we generally get Bitcoin by mining, um, uh, in kind of that's, that's the business model. Okay. Hope that answers your question, Ben. Uh, next one, Jed Harvey at Jedi Warrior. Are you still referring to football as soccer? UK resident. Um, unfortunately, yes, Jed, I am. Um, because I'm Canadian over here. It's a bit obnoxious over here, to be honest. If you, it's like saying Perry, you know, I'm going to Perry. I'm at, at the Canadians. We, we, we call it soccer and, and North Americans in general, but, um, yeah, a good question. Okay. Next question is from, um, the hunt for profit at some like it, Dan, how important is it to have a culture of continuous improvement within Argo? Yeah, I, I think it's really important, um, Dan. I, I think, you know, being a, a new, we, you know, we've been around three years um, in a new space. I think we need to continue to learn in order to grow. Um, so we have a small team, you know, we're very scrappy. We are very, um, what's, what's the right word? Multi-skilled. Um, and uh, within that, we try to allow people to, you um, we don't generally put everyone in, in just kind of a box and say, this is the only thing you do. There's lots of cross-skilling. There's lots of, uh, you know, many people touch many different things within the company. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's gotten us to kind of where we are. Um, we, we, you know, we, we're, there's a kind of, a, um, I don't know about continuous, I don't know if improvement's the right word, but I think there's a culture of innovation and of, um, of you know, not being afraid to move quickly and try new things. Maybe that's the best way to phrase it. Um, yeah, interesting question. And, and obviously, as you know, the CEO of Argo, I'm very interested in the culture that we're creating and, and how we achieve the things that we need to achieve, you know, on a, on a weekly, monthly and, and yearly basis. Um, Kev Haggis at Kev Rooney one commendable di directorship news well received by Argonauts. No surprise to the success of the long term strategy appears to be working well with great expectations for the future. Question one, what do you enjoy as the director of Argo? Question two, <laughs> how does the Argo board celebrate success? Um, I mean, I, honestly, what I enjoy is I enjoy when our shareholders are, are you know, engaged and asking good questions and are happy with, with the direction of the company. Obviously, you're not, we're not going to keep everyone happy, um, but I, yeah, I, I, I um, you know, I, I, enjoy when we're, when we're achieving and when that's being recognized by our shareholders and by the market. Um, two, how does the board celebrate success? I don't know if we, there's a, you know, I, I think we'll celebrate in 2025 or something. I, I just feel like there's, there's a lot to do and uh, we really haven't had a, any chance to celebrate. There's, there's, it's just, um, it's busy. 
I went for a hike this weekend, which was nice. Uh, I got outside and Sunday went for um, a three hour hike with my wife in nature. That was good. Not We're still in lockdown here in Canada, in Ontario right now. So it's not a ton of opportunities to do a ton of celebrating. <clears throat> um, and yeah, like I said, there's still lots of work to be done. Um, Mark, at Mark 800-17363, we know Argo employed a firm for more exposure in America. So any updates to how that's progressing? Great RNSs and forward-looking vision, but it seems the company just hasn't got the exposure yet compared to the other miners. Um, yeah, obviously in, in, in the UK, a great exposure, you know, we have, um, we're one of the, you know, the, the high, most highly traded, um, stocks, there's lots of volume, um, and, and that's great. Um, I think in the U S it's a bigger market. It, you know, we're, it takes a long time. We're traded right now in the OTC. Um, and, uh, it, it just takes a while to get the word out. So I feel like our, Certainly in the crypto press in uh, North America, we're, we're very well known. We have a good reputation. We've, I've been doing lots of podcasts, things like that. Um, in terms of, you know, exposure outside of that, I think we'll just have to wait and see. You know, there's uh, lots of interest in uh, in our company. There's lots of interest in our story. Um, I think we've done a pretty good job on communications in general. Um but America is a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a large beast and a big market. So. Uh, we're just going to keep hammering away. Um, Scott Whitby, at Scott Whitby 33. Hi, Peter. You're doing a sterling job, sir. Who is your favorite Star Wars character? May the fourth be with you and us all, hopefully. So, um, yeah, this is going to come out about uh, about the, the 4th of May, actually, I think a little bit later. Um, and may the fourth be with you, uh, Scott. I am a, a big Star Wars fan. Obviously, that's my generation. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a classic Star Wars guy, kind of, you know, the originals four five, six or one, two, three, depending on how you think about it. I think probably Empire, you know, is my favorite Empire Strikes Back. Um, in terms of favorite characters, um, definitely Han Solo, you know, he's a lovable rogue. He's, he's just doesn't, you know, he's his own boss. He does his own thing. Um, and, uh, and then he gets the girl, you know, at the end. So. Yeah, definitely Han Solo is the man and he carries that kind of, you know, the cool gun um, that no one else really seems to have. Um, okay, that's it. That's video number two. Um, thanks everyone for your questions. Sorry I had to move locations in the middle of the video and um, video three is coming out soon.